on changing the atmosphere. You see, what you pour in is what will come out. That's why I tell people all the time, don't spend all day watching any one thing. You know, a lot of things I never watch. Every now and then I'll just get a little dose of it just to see how wacko crazy they are going. You know, like CNN and NBC and the, the, the mainstream media people, you know. But I'm telling you, don't watch Fox all day either. Don't do it. Don't do it. Even though, they're, even though Harvard says they have the most balanced coverage. Harvard University. Now, you think about that. You know, left-wing Looney Tune Harvard. And they, say, and they say Fox has the most balanced news, whereas the others are 90-10, 80-20. Fox was 52 negative and 48 positive when it comes to our president. Isn't that something? But don't watch Fox all the time either. You see, you've got to take time. I, I tell people, you watch as much Christian television as you do secular you'll be better off. You'll be better off. You listen to as much Christian music as you do secular. You'll be better off because it affects your atmosphere. It affects how you are, who you are, and how you perceive, how you act, and how you react. It does. It absolutely does. You see, we were worshiping. I mean, I thank God that Pastor Jeff was able to be up here today. I thank God. I mean, after seeing the pictures where that bus T-boned him, I thought, wow, my goodness. Yay, God. You know, isn't the Lord good? You see, but you know what? That changed his atmosphere. <laughs> And it still changed it. Do you hear what I'm saying? You know, I mean, he's not back to 100% uh, yet. And, but it changed his atmosphere. It changed how he felt and what he, but, but you know what he didn't wuss out. He was here, wasn't he? Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. My goodness, if, if, my, if my little pinky gets a hangnail, I, I'm out for three weeks. Or some people are. You know that's true. He's raised us up together. He's raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, our life counsel comes from where... We are seated. Our life counsel, you know, the counsel we receive, our life counsel comes from where we are seated, where we are focused, where we sit down. He has got is to raise us up together and made us sit. Be seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, we've got two options. We do. We can either get earthly counsel, you know, watch a crooked news network all day, you know, or, or watch MSLSD, you know. You're not going to sit in a very good place. But I'm telling you, if you watch Fox too much, you're not going to sit in a good place either. You've got to know, you've got to sit in the right place. That's where you get your counsel. And you'll either get earthly counsel or you'll get heavenly counsel. Now, we're getting one or the other, and it's all the time. And you need to be aware of that. And you need to be conscious of that. In Matthew 6, 10, verses 21 through 23, the scripture says, 
From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem, suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and be raised the third day. And then Peter, good old Peter, I can identify with Peter. Peter was a commander. I took a, she had me take a personality test the other day. Oh, Lord, have mercy. That thing knew, that thing knew, it, oh, blah, 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 blah. and it called me the commander. The commander. Well, Peter was a commander. Now, commanders got strengths, but I, I hate to admit it, they have weaknesses too. Peter took him aside and rebuked Jesus. Now, you think that through a little bit. He rebuked him and he said, Are you crazy? Now, that's, that's today. Far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. Ooh. Now, what was Peter thinking? Now, you didn't come here to die. We, we come here to win. You didn't come here to die. You come here to live because we're going to see to it that you become king of all Israel. Now, they're thinking from an earthly perspective. They're... And Peter is giving Jesus earthly counsel. He says, but he turned and said to Peter, oh, bless your heart. No, that's not what he said. No, that's not what he said at all. He said, Jesus became not politically correct. I, the thing of it is, he was never politically correct. He said, get behind me, Satan. You're an offense to me. You're not mindful of the things of God. What? But of the things of men. You see? That's why people ask me, are you a Democrat or Republican? I said, no, I'm a Christian. And I really mean that. I'm a Christian. My faith in Christ affects every facet of my life, including politics. And if the parties ever flip-flop, then you're going to think I'm something else because I'm going to stay with Jesus, and I'm going to stay with his word. Do you hear what I'm saying? Do you understand? It's not that I'm mindful of the things of men. I'm mindful of the things of God. Amen? So, we going to get earthly counsel? Peter, now, Jesus, come on. You, you, this is bad PR. Oh, they're going to hear it. And, it's, and no, 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 no. And Jesus said, right on the end of the nose. That's what he said. Get behind me, you devil. God help us not to be the devil's mouthpiece. Because, it, there's, listen, there are many times, many, many times, you are going to have an opportunity to give counsel in your family, to your spouse, to your children, your grandchildren, or you, at work, at school, doesn't matter. Don't you talk like hell, you talk like heaven. You give them heavenly, godly counsel. Not counsel based on what's going on in the world. Do you hear what I'm saying? Do you hear what I'm saying? Well, in Acts chapter 27, verses 9 through 12, the scripture says, Now, much time had been spent sailing. It was dangerous. Now, now he's, he, uh, Paul's heading toward Rome. And he says, it's dangerous. Uh, the fast was already over. Paul advised saying, I perceive that this voyage will end with disaster and much loss. And not only the cargo of the ship, but nevertheless, the centurion. Now, Paul is saying, we need to stay right here. Let's not st sail it yet. This is a bad, th th the weather's bad. The seas are bad. And even though they don't have... A Ritz, they just got a Super 8. We need to stay here. You see, the accommodations weren't the nicest, and the the you know the the ability to whatever 
rowdy sailors want to get into wasn't bountiful, okay? And he says, uh, but, uh, but the centurion, the guy in charge, he was persuaded by the helmsman and the owner of the ship that the things uh, more than what Paul had told him. Now, we know what happened. The ship sunk. They lost all the cargo. They lost everything. Why? Because they were looking with an earthly counsel instead of a heavenly one. Do you hear what I'm saying? Now, in James chapter 3, verses 14 through 18, the scripture says this about earthly counsel. It says, if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie uh, against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, earthly, sensual, and demonic. For where there is envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom which is from above, look here, it's pure, it's peaceable, it's gentle, it's willing to yield. You see, it's not always you're right. You see, for some people, it's more important to be right about things that aren't worth dying for. And he says, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. You see, it depends where you're seated. It depends where you're seated. It's where you're getting your counsel from. You get your counsel from where you are seated. You know, in this, in this, you know, we're getting, summer has begun unofficially. I know June 20th, I think it is, or somewhere in there, is when it really begins in an uh, uh, atmospheric, scientific way. But for us, in the way we live here in America, Memorial Day kicks off summer. And summer means a lot of things. And, and you know, you need rest, you need vacation, you need all these things. Yeah, 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 yeah. But regardless of where you find yourself, feed yourself from above and not from this earth. Feed yourself. Because you, you whether you realize it or not, you, you are a counselor and you will give counsel. And wherever you're sitting is where, that's where you get your counsel and the counsel you give. Well, I want it to glorify the Lord and not satisfy the flesh. Do you, isn't that what you want? Now, so you option one, earthly counsel. Option two, heavenly counsel. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10, 11, and 12, the Scripture says, Anytime, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10, 11, and 12. Ba boom well, let me find it here in my Bible. And uh, those things will make you lazy. You know that? It makes me lazy. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wicked, wickedness in heavenly places. You see, we're in a battle whether you realize it or not. We are. You know, we think, oh, I'm a pacifist. I'm not. Listen, the devil is bloody in your nose every day. You need to wake up and realize that you are in a battle. Decisions of life that you make concerning family and homes and automobiles and, and, and everything. The, devil, the devil's either going to smack you in the mouth or you're going to smack him in the mouth. It's one or the other. It's one or the other. And so let's get our heavenly counsel so we can stand against the wiles of the devil. Can you say amen to that? Get your advice from God and his word, not advice, instruction. In Revelation chapter 12, uh, verse 13, did I give you that one? Okay, we'll move on. Did I give you James 3? Put it up. 
But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. Now, why would he tell us that? Because we boast and we lie. Oh, I'm offended. We'll get over it. It's the truth. You know who, you know who you're the biggest liar to? Yourself. Yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. But where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are. And that is true. Amen. The wisdom which is from, it's pure, peaceful, and all that stuff. And we went through all that. So, available actions to change your inner atmosphere. And if you want your inner atmosphere to change, you're not going to change out here till you change in here. It's got to be in here. You can do all the outside stuff, you know, you can talk it, look it, dress it, smell it, everything else. Well, they talk Christianese, they, they dress modestly, they, I don't hear them. Uh, you know, I uh, don't see him drunk or high or doing this, that, or the other. And I, I just, you know, and we can, we can just look the part. But if it stinks and rotten, it's rotten in here, that's where the change has to come. That's where it has to come. That's why a lot of people, I, you know, D.L. Moody in the late 1800s said it, he was the opinion. And of course, this was, eight, this is, you know, uh, oh, 130 years ago. He said he was the opinion that half the people in church were not born again. Now, this is in the 1880s, 18, Half the people that are in church every Sunday morning don't know what it is to be born again. Don't know what it is to be saved, to pass from death. Unlocked. Now, if it was that way 150 years ago, 130 years ago, how worse has it gotten today? There's whole denominations that have gone into apostasy, you know? That, that completely drifted and departed from the, the, the deity of Christ, the inspiration of Scripture, the blood atonement, the bodily resurrection, the second coming, all these things. And political, theological liberalism has slipped in the back door of many evangelical churches in a PC way, politically correct way. Well, let's just be positive all the time. Let's just be seeker sensitive and be nice and all this. Well, I like being nice. You know, but sometimes you have to be a lion. Never lose the lamb's heart. You've got to always have the lamb's heart. But you see, warriors take on armor. And guess what you do with armor? You fight. You stand and fight when you have to. Amen? Now, well, how do I change my inner atmosphere? Philippians 4, verses 6 through 9, the Scripture says, Be anxious for nothing. Boy, that blew it out of the water for a lot of people. Be anxious. There's nothing worth being anxious over. Because when, anx when anxiety overcomes you, you're saying, God's not big enough to handle this. I've got to take care of it. Now, you know what that's saying? You're God. That's what you're saying. You're not God. i got news for you. You're not God. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, here we go, by prayer and supplication. Prayer, talking to God, conversing with God, listening for God. And supplication. Now, that, that doesn't mean necessarily. That means, Lord, supply the needs of those out yonder. Don't be so focused on you. I want, I think I need, I want, I want, I got to, got to, got to have it. You see, you need to be more concerned outside. He says supplication with thanksgiving. Lord, I'm thankful for everything you've done for me. I'm thankful for how you've answered prayer and worked in my life, how you've used me. 
I mean, my goodness, 41 years ago when I started preaching the gospel, I'd have never dreamed. I'd have never dreamed. 45 years ago, <laughs> mercy me. You know, something's happened. Saturday's June the 3rd. You're doing something. Uh, helping Norma, and uh, there's something else going on. I remember an announcement. See, I pay attention. Huh? Walk for life. That's it. Walk for life. Yep, yep. June 3rd. That's an important day to me. I'll never forget it. Or I haven't yet. Because June the 3rd, 1971, I graduated from high school. In a high school that no longer exists. Consolidation, racking, fracking, smacking, smacking. Get out of that hole. You can have the shovel. Let's move on. Let your requests be made known to God. Now, God's promised to meet all our needs. You know, I heard a preacher say, I never pray about my needs because God has already promised to meet them. In this very same book, you know, uh, Philippians 4, uh, 19, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And I heard, uh, man, that really, I had to, that kind of sucker punched me a little bit and I had to study it out. And, you know, God's already given his word he's going to meet our needs. He wants us to love him and obey him and serve him and follow after him. You don't have to worry about needs. But then, well, then what are our requests? Lord, save those I love. Save my coworkers. Save my classmates. Lord, sin, sin revival. Lord, turn America back to you. You see, let your requests be made known to God. Pray for my brother and sister who has this situation going on in their home, in their household, in their marriage, in their life, in their family. Instead of getting on the phone and gossiping, let's go to prayer and talk to somebody who can make a difference. Can somebody say amen? amen? And then he says in verse 7, and, and, and look what happens. If we'll get this inner atmosphere working right, if we sit down in the right place, then he says, and the, what's the next word? Do you realize most people in the world have no idea what that means? They've never experienced it. People leave their homelands because there's no peace. There's war and, and murder and kidnapping and rape and drugs and all this gang stuff. And they run here to get away from that. And now that junk's here. You know, MS-13 and all that hellish outfit and drugs and all that. And, and let me tell you something about the MS-13. They're an equal opportunity employer. They're not just Salvadorans in that, that gang. Do you understand? They'll take Hondurans and Mexicans and, 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 and uh, Guatemalans and anybody else. You see, the suits their purpose. Don't, don't just think it's just... And the peace of God... Now, I like this kind of peace... You say, oh, but my marriage is having difficulties or I've got financial problems or my kids are giving me grief. Or, wait, 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 wait. And the peace of God, now look at that next phrase, which surpasses all understanding. Wow. I'd like to dive headlong into that. How about you? I'd like to swim around in that to realize that God, it might be bad grammar, but God's got this. He has it. I might not understand it, all the, everything I need to, and I might not see exactly what's going on, but I'm going to trust him. And you know what else it'll do? If I don't live in Anxiousville and I live in Peace Town, it will guard our hearts and our minds. And the only way it's guarded is through Christ Jesus. Oh, he is the big deal. 
Finally, brethren, whatever. Th and, then, and then Paul says, now listen, if it's true, it, that'll eliminate a lot of talk, won't it? If it's true, if it's noble. In other words, does it elevate? It, is there justice in this thing? Is there pureness? Is, there, is this a holy thing? Is this thing that's lovely? You know, a little, little baby boy. She didn't give birth to a baby. She gave birth to a toddler. <laughs> you know, a little fella. That little fella. That, you know, that's lovely. I, I, they sent me a picture of him, you know, and I think, golly, that kid's big as my leg. <laughs> he's, a, he's a big old boy, you know. But I'm telling you, in that mother's heart, you know, all the distress and the discomfort and, the, you know, toting him around for nine months and all that other stuff, you know, and it just, choo, that's my baby. It's lovely, lovely. Bless his little old, big old self. Whatever things are good report. Boy, that eliminate about 80% of what people say. Wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Good report. You know? Why is it that bad news travels around the world in a heartbeat and good news takes days for people to find out about it? I move on. Here's my shovel. I'm getting out of the hole. If there's any virtue and anything praiseworthy, what's he say to do to these things? Meditate. Meditate. To muse, you know. Uh, to, the idea is, um, uh, now I'm, I'm a country boy. Around cattle and hogs and chickens and making hay and horses and mules. Wasn't crazy about mules, but we'll pass that on by. You know, a cow has five stomachs. Did you know that? And they chew their cud. They get a bite of grass. And they swallow it, and it does a little digesting. Then it comes back up, and they chew it some more. From, what, from that act, we get the word muse. You see, to ponder a long time, to make sure it's all gone through, Meditate on these things, the good things, the godly things, the precious things, the things that, in, that, that exalt Jesus. Oh, yeah, there'll be a time when you got to, when evil comes and it comes to your house, you'll have to address it, you know? You need to be warned about what's going on in the world. That's why we have Bible study, Sunday school, life groups. That's why from time to time I have to say a thing or two. But friends, the more we make life about Jesus, the more we make it about his goodness, his grace, his mercy, his love, his forgiveness. Oh, yeah, he, told, he called, there was a time, say. Peter, you're Satan. Get behind me. You're an offense to me. Those times come. But, but friends, he was on his father's business. He was on mission, doing what God had sent him to do. And what did he do? But he healed. He raised from the dead. He gave blind uh, the, their sight, the deaf their hearing. He straightened out crooked limbs. He did all kinds of wonderful things. Let's do wonderful things. Amen. And then he says, then the, the, how else we do? Let's, let's sing. We pray. We sing. Uh, in uh, Colossians 3, 7, uh, 3, 16, I believe it is. Let the word of God um, 
dwell richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart. You want to change the atmosphere? You know, that's why music's so important in our life. Uh, just uh, let, you get in the car. What do you do? Yeah, you do. Yeah. And a lot of people, when they get home, if they don't turn on the one-eyed monster, they turn on the radio, don't they? They want to hear something. And, and, and you know what? Nine times out of ten, it's music. Why is that? Well, God thought music was very important. Matter of fact, the highest, one of the, uh, that's what Lucifer's job was. You know, he became Satan. I mean, he knows. He knows. That's why he knows it's so important to attack the music industry. You know, how many famous people singing music today ought to be singing to the glory of God and they're singing for the glory of Satan. He knows. He knows. Ephesians 5, 19, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and, and, and uh, spiritual songs, singing and making melody in our heart. You see, where you're seated, where you sit down is where you get your counsel. And dear friends, um, it's after 12 o'clock, and I'm going to land this. I'm going to land this thing. We'll get the other half of this message some other time. I just want you to know this. Can you go to 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3 and following? The end result of sitting in your heavenly seat. 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3, 4, and 5. Okay, Second Corinthians, oh, okay. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Now, we are at war, but our war is spiritual. For the weapons of our welfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. You see, that's why, you know, you need to be involved in your children's education. And you say, well, I, I just, the Lord's not provided for me to give my child a Christian education. Well, then go to the secular school and get involved. Get involved. Get involved. Casting down arguments in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And being, uh, and being ready to punish all disobedience. When your obedience is fulfilled. You see, in verse 3, you live in but not of. Go back to verse 3. You live in, you walk in, but not of. In verse 4, use the right weapons for the right fight. Verse 5, get clear on God's truth versus the world's beliefs. God's truth. Not what some joker in some secular university who thinks they know more than God. But see what God says about it. And stand with him. And in verse 6, punish disobedience how? With obedience. Do the right thing. Amen? Amen. Changing the atmosphere. Now I want you to know God wants you to be an atmosphere changer. And can I tell you, it's all up to you. It's all up to you. You say, well, my, my situation, listen, it, you, you're responsible for you. It's all up to you. It's all up to you. Decisions you make. Well, I'm in a financial bind. Well, uh, what bad, what decisions you make get you there? Uh-huh. Do you understand? Well, I, my wife, I tell you, well, you married her. And just like Oz said, if you'll treat her like a queen, she'll treat you like a king. Ouch and amen. <laughs> I want to ask you one final question. Where are you sitting? Who are you listening to? I want to ask you to pull your chair up to the table of the Lord. And feed on the things of God. And it'll affect everything about your life. And if you don't, listen, most things in this world's not going to go the way you think they ought to. 
And if you're not feeding on the things of the God, you're going to act like some little silly pouting child, mad and whining and fussing and fuming. And, and God's called us to grow up and be men and women of God. Amen. Don't grow old in the Lord. Grow up in the Lord. Get them spiritual huggies off and put your britches on. And act like you're a man or woman of God. Amen? Let's stand.